The Lord said as he entered the world, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us recall to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. It is not enough for you to weary people. Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall bear with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblations you wish not, but ears open to obedience you give me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scrolls it is prescribed for me, to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hidden within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness, and your truth is in the vast assembly. 
Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the letters to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written for me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Salvation and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desire nor delight in. These are offers offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will. He asks, he takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if you heard a, a buzz a few minutes ago or the screen went black, um, I apologize. I, I left my phone on uh, vibrate and um, didn't turn the phone off itself so I wouldn't get any calls. So, so sorry about that if, if, if that's what happened. <clears throat> There's a beautiful painting. I don't know who, who painted it, but it, it's, it's very famous. And it's a picture of the Annunciation. And in this particular picture, there's two scenes. There's one scene where you see a man and a woman in a garden, and they're walking. 
walking away. They're walking out of the picture. And then on the right side of the picture is a, another scene. And that's the picture of a beautiful woman kneeling down, and she's holding a book. And that book, of course, is the sacred scripture. And then you see the angel approach her, and the angel, I believe, is, is, is kneeling as he is approaching. And you see this beautiful beam from the sky shining on this, this beautiful lady, and the picture of a little dove coming down. Well, that scene, of course, that beautiful woman is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this picture is a scene of uh, the, the, the Annunciation. And this, in this picture, it's, it's, it's very telling of what really is, is going on. You know, why would we have the picture of the garden? You know, the picture of the garden, if you haven't guessed, that is Adam and Eve. And we recall Adam and Eve were, were created, they were created perfect, but yet they decided to sin, to turn their back on God. They think that's what sin is, to turn their back on God, to know, to think that they know what is better for them than God does. And so they let sin enter the world. This is the first Adam and Eve. And then they fell, and then sin entered the world because of their fall. Well, here you pan to the right of the picture, and then you here we have this picture of the Annunciation, Our Lady, and she is known as the New Eve. So just like Adam and Eve, who are given a choice, you know, do everything that the Lord says, do, and follow His commandments, don't eat of the tree of the apple. Our Lady was given that same choice. Will she bring forth the Son who will save us from our sin? And instead of disobeying God, she said yes to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. She gave her complete yes to him. And because of that, she is known as the New Eve. I believe it was St. Bernard who, was, who says that all of creation, you know, is hanging with bated breath on her response. What is she going to say to the Lord? Is she going to say, no, like Eve, I'm going to do what I want? Or I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to let God work through me. And whatever it entails, I know the scriptures she would have been thinking, you know, because she was reading the scriptures. She would have known about the prophecy that a virgin conceive and bear a son like we hear in the first reading. She would have known about the suffering servant in Isaiah, you know, and, and, and about all the different prophecies of what would happen when our Lord would come, that he would be rejected and killed and have to suffer, be scourged and spit at and made fun of and take it to the cross, she would have known all that. Because it was in Scripture. But what did, and what did she say? She didn't run from the cross. She said, okay, Lord, thy will be done. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. So she becomes the new Eve. And her son is the new Adam. And here they are to restore creation, to take our sinful selves and nail them to the cross so that we might have life. Through her, yes, we have, we have been given the church. And the church is the instrument of salvation for the whole world. And it's in the church that we receive grace, sanctifying grace, the very life of God, so that we can be in His presence, so that we can be pleasing to Him. You know, the Annunciation is very beautiful to think about. 
You know, sometimes you hear from people, you know, about, you know, the flesh is, is evil, the flesh is bad. But it's not. And the proof of that is the Annunciation, where God became man, where God became flesh, to dwell among us, to take on our flesh and raise it up to the heights of heaven. There's a beautiful phrase, I, I, I don't know who, who said it, maybe St. Alphonsus, or maybe St. Augustine. God became flesh, God became man, so that men can become like God. So he sees us in our sinfulness. He doesn't walk away, but he comes into that creation. He comes in to, to be with the people who have sinned against him and to say, look, I forgive you. I love you. I want to raise you up. Turn to me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. I can save you. I love you so much to come to dwell among you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We see that at sports games and, and everything. John 3.15 And the meaning behind that is today. The incarnation. Where God takes on our flesh and raises it up. So let us be thankful that our Lord never abandons us. Let us be thankful that He's given us the instrument of salvation to come back to Him, to turn to Him. And let us be thankful and reform our lives, reform our lives of sin and turn back to Him and worship Him as He deserves, as He so much desires. God is so good. Never doubt that. Think of this day, the Incarnation. And nine months from this day is Christmas Day. And what a beautiful day to, to, to meditate on being pro-life. Because God became man in the womb, the virginal womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, at his conception, that's the incarnation. So all life, even from its very beginning, must be respected and defended given life and never be rejected because God became man in that state. So let us think of our life and see how we can turn back to the Lord how we can live the, the joy of this day, of the Incarnation. God becoming man to dwell among us. Let us give all our heart and mind and soul to Him. And we ask Our Lady, the new Eve, to help us. And may we say yes like she did to the Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. To say with her at the wedding feast of Cana, do whatever he tells you to do. 
follow our Lord, that you may have life and hope and joy and peace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He had ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On the Feast of the Annunciation, we celebrate Mary's trust, finding in her the example of saying yes to God. For the leaders of the Church, may the Lord richly bless them in their ministry and protect them from all evil that surrounds them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national leaders, may God grant them compassion and insight in acting for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and all those who care for them, we pray especially for those sick with the coronavirus and those who minister to them. May God grant them healing, relief, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit continue to empower us in saying yes to what God asks of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom by Mary and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Julie Rice, and the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Free the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake, by the overshadowing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name these offerings, these holy and unbetter sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Roger, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and bless Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, 
and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his set resurrection, merit to retain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke heavenly humbly prayer. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking